I don't know if anyone's going to believe me, but wallahi, I swear to God, I'm not making any of this up. Bear in mind, my parents don't even believe me, bro. My own parents don't believe me, but my grandparents do, though. And I'm going to say this as quick as possible, this whole story, because it will take me at least 15 minutes to say it if I said it slowly. But I'm going to try and speed it up because so much happened and I even have video proof and picture proof of what happened. So I recently went Albania and came back two days ago. I went there for 10 days, right? I went there with my brother. I went there with three of my guys from the UK that we took to Albania, right? So me and my brother, obviously Albanian, and our boy is Albanian, but the two other guys are not Albanian. So we took them to Albania to see what our homeland looks like, to see if they like it. And they were loving it for the first couple of days. We took them to the villa. We all chipped in for a villa. It was amazing, crazy house. It was massive. <clears throat> like it was a nice modern house and in general they loved albania the scenery they were shocked when they saw it so me and my brothers were like yeah nah this is good man you know the uk guys are coming they have a good look on our country so we was excited man we loved it and there's one room downstairs right because we have two floors of the house there's one room downstairs that is like very antique and old-fashioned and when me and my boy went in there me and my boy from london which is not albania we went in there and was like right this room is like creepy because it's so old and stuff like it had like a really weird vibe that when you go in there you want to get out of it and i swear to god i'm not even joking like this sounds so cliche but wallahi i'm not joking bro like bear in mind nothing happened that day anyway but it came to the last three four days of albania when shit started to go wrong so we have a pool table downstairs on the, obviously the first floor, right? I mean, the downstairs floor, sorry. And we used to always play pool every single night, right? Every day, every night we played pool. We had a swimming pool there. Obviously, we like the swimming pool, but playing pool, we're Albanian. You know, we're like, we love playing pool. Now, it was nighttime, right? We was playing pool. And tell me why the white pool ball starts to move on its own in front of us. Cool, fair enough. The air conditioning's on, but... Realistically, you know the air conditioning is not as strong to me or flipping white ball or the, you know the pool table ball. Then cool, fair enough, the white ball moved. We was like, alright, that's kind of weird. Bear in mind, I didn't see the white ball move. I'm not gonna lie to you. My boys saw it and they told me so. I was still a bit skeptical. Then the whole lights of the house shut off. Completely shut off about two minutes after the ball situation. Lights shut off, they turn back on, they start flickering on and off. I still wasn't scared because obviously in Albania we get power cuts sometimes. It's nothing, it's not rare to get a power cut, right? So I was like, all right, cool. Power cut in a villa, like it's, it's kind of weird because that usually happens in the villages and stuff, but you know, cool. Power cuts are not too rare. But this is when it all went downhill. So after the blackout, we went upstairs, we got our flashlights, turned them on, whatever. The lights came back on, so we turned our flashlights off. One of my boys was still downstairs, and all I hear is guys 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 come here right now like this guy was shouting from the top of his lungs and everyone's like what the hell happened he's like you man come here right now he was like shouting at us like demanding us to come downstairs we came downstairs and in that creepy room that i spoke about earlier the shutter and the door which are always closed we never open them open the door was open and the shutter was half open listen i'm telling you right now the way we thought Albanian mafia came in to kill us or rob us or whatever because we're in a villa. Like, we literally thought people came into the house like mafias or something to rob us and kill us. We all, everyone ran upstairs, ran upstairs, found any knife they could. The guys literally got every shank they could, yeah, held them, went all the way downstairs. We literally thought people broke in to kill us or something or, like, rob us. Everyone got the knives out, went downstairs to that room where the doors are open. And because we heard shuffling through one of the rooms in that creepy room, my boy had the knife in his hand and his torch. And because it was pitch black, because the lights were out, he looks around the corner with his knife in his hand, with his flashlight out, ready to stab at anyone that was literally there behind it. It never happened, so it was all good. No one was even there. But listen, it gets worse. This is literally the introduction of the story. It gets way worse. I have so much to tell you, bro. And my other boy who went to grab a knife, he ran upstairs to the door and it was a smart move. He looked through the peephole, but the peephole looked as if someone had put their hands over it like that, but completely like that. So it was pitch black, but he couldn't tell if someone put their hand over it or if it was just pitch black because it was nighttime. But after a couple minutes went past, I was thinking, all right, cool. Maybe the guys are tripping. Maybe someone left the door open. But deep inside, I knew that nobody ever left that door open. So I go outside to the swimming pool area, right? I go outside to the swimming pool area. I'm like, come on, guys, man. Forget this. Let's jump in a pool. I go on a diving board. I'm about to do a backflip 360 into the pool, like a normal backflip, because I was excited. I was like, you know what? Leave this, man. This is some bullshit. I didn't really believe them at the time, yeah. 
As soon as I was about to jump in, I swear to God, I'm not joking. I had a gut feeling not to jump in. Something told me, don't jump in or something will pull you down and drown you into the water. I don't know why my brain was thinking like that. I didn't jump in. Two of my guys were at the door looking at me about to do a backflip. These guys start shouting like, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? Two of them, literally from the corridor, the same room, they hear a demonic voice groaning. And I... I I don't even want to explain how the sound sounded because it sounds so cliche and it actually vex it actually pisses me off because no one's gonna believe us because of how the sound sounded. It was literally like a uh, like that. And I know you're probably thinking this guy's lying, this guy's capping, but I swear to god it was that voice. I I I honestly wish it was a different sound just so I could explain it and it sounds more realistic, but I'm not even joking. That was literally the sound. The guys were shocked. We all ran upstairs and we were explaining what happened to my brother and everything. And we all stood up and we started sitting down all together as a group and thinking, what the hell is happening? First of all, it's not Matthew, thankfully, that's, that's going to kill us or whatever. But still, now we know we're dealing with something out of this world, right? Well, I say out of this world, but I mean like a demonic force or something, like a jinn. So my boy is sitting down. Bear in mind, my English boy, he does not believe in ghosts. He doesn't believe in jinns, demons or whatever. He's sitting down. He starts bugging out. He's like, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? Something touched his back, bro. I swear to God, something touched his back. He starts screaming because he felt something touch his back. Bear in mind, this guy does not believe in any of that. He touches back. We look at his back. On the same spot he got touched, his back is completely red. And look at the picture. I have a picture. That's the picture. And you know what makes it worse? Literally, about three minutes later, the red mark was completely gone. When he got touched, he was bugging out. He was terrified because imagine something touching you and no one's behind you or anything like that. That's creepy. One more thing, which I don't know how I forgot to mention is I woke up in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night and I'm hearing ha, ha, from the hallway. Please don't laugh at me. I swear to God, I'm not joking. I ran to my brother's room, which were the other guys were at as well. And guess what? One of them woke up as well. He heard the same thing. He was terrified just as me. Imagine hearing that right outside your room, bro, when you wake up first thing in the morning. You hear banging, you hear banging, then you hear that demonic voice. When I tell you, you had Ayatollah Kursi playing downstairs. I should have kept it on the speakers all night, though, but, bro. Now, after about an hour or two, nothing actually happened for like a while, you know, nothing was happening. But obviously, the guys were still scared. I'm sitting down talking to the guys about what's happened, like, all scared and stuff here. And from the corner of my eye, bro, wallahi, I swear to God... I saw a figure from the corner of my eye and a sound. I heard a sound first, so I looked right and I see a figure, bro. And I swear on my life, bro, wallahi, I'm not joking. I saw a dark figure with long hair and it had curtains. But even though it had curtains and long hair, I could tell it was a male. It was like a male, a uh, male gin or something like that. It was definitely male because I could sense it was like masculine. I don't know what it was. It had long hair curtains, but I could still tell it was masculine. And I was terrified, so I bugged out. I jumped and I told the guys what happened. And obviously they believed me because they knew I wasn't going to make it up after all this stuff happened. And we promised each other that no one's going to scare each other with all this bullshit, especially while all this is happening. Oh, don't worry, it gets even worse. It gets even worse. And two of my guys, they go downstairs to see if anything happens. Oh, to my surprise, something gets thrown across the room or something drops. They hear a sound. They sprint upstairs. They sprint upstairs in fear and tell us what happened. So me and my other boy, Damien, yeah. Me and my other boy were like, you know what, cool. Let me and him go downstairs together and really see if, there's, if these guys are capping or if they really heard something. We go downstairs, I get my camera out. I have this recorded, by the way. I'm going to play the clip right after this. I have my camera out. I was like, all right, cool. I'm feeling brave. I got my camera. I know nothing paranormal is going to happen. I'm walking around the pool room. As soon as we get downstairs, a bottle lid comes flying through that little creep room. Flying from the creep room bah, to the hallway. It gets thrown out of nowhere. There was nobody downstairs. The bottle lid gets thrown. I'm going to play the vigil right now so you guys see it. Watch this. Now they're on Tuesday. Watch it. Oh, oh, no! Bro, when I tell you I was terrified. Now, we ran upstairs whatever after our guys came to pick us up from downstairs because we were too scared to walk back into that hallway. Went upstairs. Some time goes by, my brother's asleep, all of us are, are awake. Bear in mind, it's sunset, no, I mean, it's, sun, it, it's sunrise right now, it was sunrise. We were all at the hallway upstairs, looking down the stairs, thinking, what is happening in this house, bro? As we're looking downstairs, something else gets thrown. 
But we're here another sound downstairs. All of us are like, what the hell is happening? What the hell is happening? Bro, my heart was beating so fast. And guess what? That wasn't the end. I swear to God, more happened. Right after that sound, two of my guys walked backwards in fear. But me and my boy were still there listening for sounds. And me and him, we both hear... Bro, we heard shit banging aggressively downstairs as if something wanted to get us out. We literally heard bangs, like aggressive bangs and vibrations coming from downstairs. So my boy sprinted. We all literally ran from that sound. We sprinted. My boy accidentally broke the door that leads to the balcony because he sprinted right through it. He broke the flipping fly net door. He broke it. He didn't give a shit, bro, because I don't even blame him. I went to wake up my brother. I was like, bro, wake up right now. We need to get out of this house, but this house is messed up. He was still asleep. He woke up in fear, which I felt bad for him, but we had to wake him up. We even called our auntie. She didn't believe us. We called the Airbnb host. They didn't believe us. Everyone's excuse was we're on drugs or something. And I don't even do drugs, bro. I don't even do drugs. Don't worry. It gets worse. When we went to sleep, we all slept together in the same room. I'm telling you right now, bro. No homo. We all slept together in the same room. There was no way any of us are sleeping alone or in separate rooms. I literally only got three hours of sleep because the whole night I'm waking up hearing doo, 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 bangs. I'm hearing shit get thrown across the room. I'm hearing all this stuff. I couldn't sleep and I managed to somehow get three hours of sleep. But guess what? What wakes me up in the morning? I feel literally four fingertips wake me up. I get grabbed in my leg. Literally, I feel four fingertips like that touch my leg. So I woke up in fear. And guess what? My boy wakes up to the exact same thing. Four fingertips touching him. He explained it exactly how I did. Then on that night, it was nighttime again. Because bear in mind, we was not going to leave the house because of this gin behavior. We was not going to leave because we spent so much money on this villa and was not going to leave three days of worth of money just because of some gin. So we were all sitting down in the living room at night talking about what's happening and stuff. And my boy is sitting in a position where he sees his reflection. But on the lamp, for example, on this inside of a lamp, it's not this one because I'm in the UK right now. But the one he was looking at yeah, in Albania in that villa... He can see a reflection of a silhouette staring right at him. And the way he described it, exactly how I described the silhouette that I saw. A dark figure, brown hair, long curtains, just like that up to his shoulder. Bro, exactly how I explained what I saw. Bro, I'm even in fear right now talking about this, I swear to God. But long story short, that night passed. We wake up hearing the air vents, you know, in the vents, the AC turns off. The oven turned on and off a couple times. The switch that you have to manually turn on to keep the whole lights in the house flickered on and off. But I'm just let's just forget about that, by the way. We hear more bangs and stuff. At this point, we got used to hearing these bangs. It wasn't as scary anymore, but it's just annoying because imagine trying to see if all you're hearing is bangs and you know it's a flipping gin. Bro, more banging happened. All of this happened. We go downstairs. Me and my brother are downstairs playing pool because it's one of the last nights. And guess what? Right in front of us, I can't even find a water bottle to show you. There was a water bottle on the on the little desk. The water bottle does a fucking backflip in front of me and my brother. The water bottle, literally, let's say this is a water bottle, right? It jumps upwards and does a backflip in front of me and my brother. My brother instantly covers his ears because he doesn't want to hear any sounds or anything else happen because he knew he was going to hear some creepy shit. So I was like, to him, I was like, don't be scared. Don't be scared this time. Like we, we experienced this like 50 times. Don't be scared. Don't feed into the gin's intention. Don't be scared. So we let go of our ears. We started walking upstairs and bro, and another door that we left closed, always somehow open completely. My auntie came over with a daughter and I'm not even surprised anymore. My daughter, her daughter, not my daughter, her daughter came to me in fear and she didn't know anything about the situation. Guess what she says to me? She goes, what was that thing that went in and out of the water that looked like a snake? I didn't even tell my auntie in case she thinks I'm trying to scare her daughter, but bro, we all know what it was, man. And I'm not even surprised if no one believes me about this story, but at least all of us know that we experienced something supernatural and that was a gin. We told my parents they think we're on drugs, even though I don't do drugs. We told our grandparents, luckily uh, my grandma believes me because she's seen gins in her life before when she was a child, so at least she believes me. But to be honest, I'm not surprised if no one believes me about this story, but I'm just telling you what's happened and what happened was, was definitely a gin. Stuck for a lot.